and welcome back. It's the Marketer of the Day podcast, and Suzanne Riley is here. Who Her last name is spelled R-E-I-L-L-E-Y. Suzanne Riley is a business coach. She's a marketing strategist. She's a copy advisor for professional service businesses and online course creators who are passionate about helping others. And Suzanne has worked with Canvas Rebel, Go Solo, Washington Post, Daily Candy. And we're going to have a fun conversation today about some of these ideas like customer research, conversion copywriting, how to amp up our game and how to do better and market better and reach others and help others with our marketing message. So Suzanne, glad to be speaking with you. Thanks so much for having me. So we we introduced you a little bit, right? Hyped up the audience. But as far as you're concerned, what are you most passionate about? What's your focus? Um, yeah, so I really love helping people demystify the whole process of building an online business. I think um, the headlines can make it sound easy. Um, you know, we see a lot of stuff that says, you know, you can make 5000 from a 30 minute webinar or you can, you know, 100000 in sales from doing this or that. And it makes sense because, you know, we tend to make headlines really compelling and we want to share our best stuff. Um, but if people are only seeing the headlines, they miss how much work it can actually be. Um, and I have, I myself have gone on, you know, sort of a steep and winding path with it, you know, as well. So I just really enjoy helping people see around corners and boiling it down to the need to know, um, and also honoring their values and how they want to build their online business to just, make it a little bit easier. <laughs> and we all need that, right? We need more ease, more simplicity. And I share the frustration with you because you like, and you can totally understand how like a, a company would, they do all these different things. And then they look at like this one webinar out of, out of all the other activities. They say, well, this one thing like made us all this money and they present it as if that's all you need to do. And, and people like you and me say, well, you have to, build a list and nurture your audience and get traffic and maybe create content, run ads. And if it's uh, the, the A advertisement or the B advertisement, right? A advertisement is saying, just run this webinar. B advertisement says, do all this really hard work and, you know, come get back to me in five years. Of course, we know what will get the most attention. And so, uh, it, but it's, but the problem with going for the quick fix is then there's the kind of the, the misplaced expectations, right? Someone jumps in and says, oh, great, I want to start a business. I'll do this. And then they get disappointed when it doesn't match up to what was promised to them. But that's why we need people like you, right? To uh, wake us up and tell us about what it is that we need to do. And so wait, just right off the bat, like where are people missing the boat? Like where you mentioned about like seeing around corners and things like that, like where are today's blind spots? Sure. Um, that's a great question. So I, one of the things is that there are a couple of things that are a little bit counterintuitive to how we might think we should run a business that are important to keep in mind. And one of those is trying to refrain from talking about your business. Like it's so natural to say, you know, this is what we do. This is what we've made. This is how we can impact your life. And especially the people I work with, they're so passionate. They're just, they just want to help people so much. And, and there is a place for that. And that is important. But I think what a lot of people miss is really taking a minute to understand who their ideal client is and doing the voice of customer research, which I can help people do in like an afternoon or a couple of days. It does not have to be this, you know, huge corporate undertaking that's, you know, tens of thousands of dollars. It doesn't have to be that. But it's really important to understand what is happening in your ideal client's life, why they might have come to you for a solution and really craft your website and your emails and everything in their language. And that can be a hard shift for some people because we, and I have to, I have to try to make this mental shift like every day because it's so natural to think, speak in the way that your brain works and it, with industry language, but the people who are coming to you are like a year or five years or a decade behind you. So 
in their evolution with whatever you teach. So you really, it's so important to meet them where they are and use their language and make offers that are based on their hopes, dreams, fears, and aspirations. That is probably the number one overlooked thing. And the people who really get this, they're dominating their industry if they want to, or if they're seeking balance, they're certainly reaching their own individual business goals, but it makes things so much easier and so much better connected. Well, empathy, right? And it's yeah. like, it, it's like you, you want your tendency is to want to talk about <clears throat> yourself and your company and your own language, but these people, they want you to talk about them. That's what everyone wants, right? Like that's the thing that get, gets the most attention is talking about them. And like you said, their, their hopes, fears, and aspirations and what they're going through and their own language. And so like, what does that look like? Like you've worked with all these uh, different clients of yours. Like, is there one that jumps out as a good example of like, when you came to them, they, they were missing this and then you turn things around and you like changed their language and the marketing in the way that makes more sense. Yeah. So, um, and the one thing I'll say is that the beauty of having this focus is that it is about empathy. It is, and it's really about, um, you know, and introverts will rejoice, like it, because it becomes a listening game of really understanding the other person. And then when you craft messaging based on that, they come to your website and they're like, oh my gosh, I'm so happy I found this person. Like they can see and hear and understand me. And they really get where I'm at. And so that is, that is so powerful. And then of course, you know, you hold that with respect and offer them things that will um, authentically change their life and help them. But um, yeah, so let me think of one example. Um, so I think uh, there are so many businesses that, again, it's really natural to want to share about your business on a business website. I mean, that is what people would, that's the natural thing to think of doing. Um, but so a, a lot of times it's really just like, it can be a hard pivot um, for people to just be doing completely different. But I can share one example of um, why it's really important to say things accurately and with specificity i had one client who offers um design courses uh and they had a value proposition that said um what did it say it was about learning graphic design and so when i started to write, write the copy about learning graphic design the owner was like oh wait it's not graphic design and so then we took a step back. This is so important. And I, I felt that this client did this so well. They always wanted, if something wasn't right, they always wanted to take a step back and pause and fix it in the moment. I think a lot of people just barrel forward and there's some, it, it is a balance. It's like, do you get something out there or do you keep tinkering with it? I mean, that is a balance, but it, they, saw that something was off and they said, wait, wait, let's make sure to get this right. This is the whole value proposition of the brand. And so we took time to really um, discuss it. And we uncovered that it the courses weren't for graphic design. It was to learn the design programs, um, Adobe Photoshop, Illustrator, and InDesign. And it was for a specific audience. So we clarified that. I crafted a very clear value proposition around that. And then everything flowed better from there. So it, it's so important to not only speak to your audience, but to be clear about what you're offering, to have a really well-refined value proposition as best as you can get it. And then, um, like I said, everything else with the brand then flows that much easier from there. And, you know, lately I've been thinking about this idea of beating up your idea, right? Is that it, when, when you don't have this focus about like, well, what, like, as far as my, my offer, like, what is it not about? Who is it not for? What does it not do? It's, it's tempting to avoid those sorts of things because, well, shouldn't this be for everybody? Shouldn't everyone want this? But I've just, the last few weeks, especially, I've been thinking a lot about how you can, be more interesting and you can extract some of maybe the, the mystery and speak 
better to like your ideal people if you just kind of uh, ask the hard questions about what your messaging is, which may be uh, if someone is going it alone or just working with their existing team, they might be kind of just shut in this little bubble and they might need someone like you from the outside looking in and saying, well, hey, I'm looking at your offer and your headline and your website, and I'm already confused. So what if you were to maybe change this or this, and then they push back and say, well, it's really that. And then maybe from there, you stumble on to, okay, here's what we really should be saying. Absolutely. And I think for myself and for other people that having that person who can give feedback from an objective place, um, even, you know, it's like, I love online funnels and marketing and copy, but oh my gosh, it's so much easier for me to craft stuff for other people. And when I say that every creative is just like nodding like crazy, because it's just, it's so much easier to work from an objective place um, and see things for other people's brands that they've been, you know, staring at for one or five or 10 years. Um, and same thing for me. Sometimes I, I connect with other business coaches and they're like, oh, have you thought of this? Have you thought of that? And um, sometimes just one or two shifts in perspective can be absolutely huge. Well, it's like when you go to someone's house and maybe it's a little bit of a mess and you say, oh, you should clean up this or rearrange the furniture there because you don't see it every day. But then your own house, maybe you see some of the clutter every day and it's hard to get into that that freshness kind of mindset. And so when you jump in with some of these companies, is there usually like a common low hanging fruit? Like, do you usually say like, oh, well, you should like clean up this design or this headline or is there something that like very often tends to be the thing that needs to be changed first? That's a great question. So it can be, it can be really unique for each business. And that's something that I'm really passionate about doing um, is understanding the business and then creating really tailored solutions or advice or, you know, whatever for them. Um, Cause every business is unique. So some people, um, so what my strengths really lie in helping people solidify their brand foundation. So that is like clarifying their ideal client, their business goals, doing competitor research, finding what makes them unique, setting strategic pricing, you know, connecting everything with conversion focused copy, irresistible offers. Then once that brand foundation is set, it's creating um, a really clear marketing plan to have an ongoing process for continually meeting new people, having them opt in to the usually opting into email, nurturing um, the relationship, sharing offers, and then nurturing buyers. So it, and so different companies typically have different things going well. So some people, they tend to be the extroverts or just the people who are, you know, love meeting people or whatever. They're like the ham on Instagram. They have all these followers. They have all these email subscribers. They have all these leads. They have all this stuff. And then they're like, why am I not converting people? So we work at that place of conversion. Some people, um, th this is me. I'm really strong mid funnel, but I have to kind of push myself to be, um, to connect with people and do that sort of extroverted stuff. Um, and so everybody has, you know, I, I always say I've never come across a business that has every one of these elements in place perfectly all at the same time. Um, and I've worked with fantastic companies, really solid, very well growing companies. Um, never came across someone who had everything dialed in at one time, but the more that someone can have um, dialed in all at the same time, the better their, their business outcomes are going to be. That's so, a really yeah, good. Insight. Yeah. It really yeah. depends on different. It really depends on the, the company. Okay. And, and so, yeah, so we need to have that marketing, the branding foundation, and then, but then also some amount of getting out there and of, of communicating and of meeting new people and filling the funnel and converting the funnel. And I like that a lot because sometimes you hear about, the really tired, like almost academic 
advice about branding like oh well, make sure your colors and your fonts match and it's like okay but what about the, the hard part the getting out there the getting traffic <laughs> and so as far as you and these companies that you help are you like somewhat in a niche are you like all over the place or is there like a like you know are 80 percent of your clients in a certain space or like what kind of like expertise uh speciality do you have I mostly work with people who are service providers and online course creators. Um, I also have some experience with product launches, so um, I can help people develop their courses. And usually, um, you know, just to give people this tidbit, you know, course titles and content and offers and all of that stuff can come from the voice of customer research. Um, you literally just hear what people are wanting again and again and again and if you know just to come up with kind of a weird example because I, I don't have anything else in mind if people keep saying like I, I really want green shoes like I've been dying to get my hands on some green shoes and then you make an offer and it's like the best green shoes you'll ever find or so it's like you just you just respond to what people are asking in a way that's aligned with your brand um so yeah, I usually work with uh, professional service businesses, online course creators, and it's usually people who are passionate about helping others. So, um, you know, it's not people only looking for profit at the expense of anything else. It's people who have this mission, they have this passion, um, they do very high quality work, um, and they really care a lot about the outcomes of their clients. Um, so that's kind of, that's kind of the space that, that I've, I've landed into and that I really enjoy. Very nice. And you've given us a little bit of an ingredients list, right? Because there's the mechanics side of things. There's the, you know, making sure your business runs and everything like that. But then also as far as the, that like extra mile aspect of it, there's the asking your audience what they want and like listening and delivering it to them. And there's also that kind of internal drive of the have your your passion for what you do and helping these people to kind of give the push on the other side. And it's cool to think about it this way. And so as far as you and your own journey and what you've done and what you've built and your uh, just kind of your, your career and, and helping out all these companies, has there ever been a point where you really struggled? Like any time when you were like, just really like stressed, panicked, not sure how to continue on? Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, Every day, right? Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, multiple times per week. Um, <laughs> yeah, and, and I think the thing about it is that um, that I think is not talked about enough, but that is, I see a, a lot is that business is such a game of outer growth and inner growth. So, and there's so much about building a business that can bring up really sensitive inner stuff. So it's like, you know, it can, um, it can be like, you're, you're trying to figure out this like your offers and your pricing and all this stuff. But then, you know, at various points, there can be this jumble of like, what are people going to think? And like, am I going to experience rejection? And like, why didn't that work? And, you know, people will share things. And this is me. And I also see this with clients. Um, I have a client who is experiencing so much resistance. Like she, she had a bad fall. She got sick twice. And there was like some other major event that happened. It's just like, you know, she's just having to sift through this, like this inner resistance as she's um, up leveling in her business. And, um, you know, sometimes people are really sharing from deep within their heart and their soul and their passion. And that's vulnerable as anything. Um, so it's really that process of, learning the skills and evolving yourself that can make things rocky. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, I think I, I made all the mistakes that everybody else does, you know, like I would try to talk about my businesses. I would discount too much. I would um, have really bad design. That's the other part of brand foundation is having a, at least a good enough design to match your business goals. Not everybody needs 
you know, like a, a $5,000, $10,000 website. Um, but you need design that matches where you're at and who you are. And that's a whole topic in and of itself. Um, but yeah, so it's just, there's a lot to get right all at one time. And then there's you evolving as a person at the same time. And I think that's the part that people don't always appreciate when they're getting into it and they're like, I'm just going to start a side hustle and it's going to be great. <laughs> right. It's not fun a hundred percent of the time. No. <laughs> no. And, and that's huge. That's a huge idea that your business is an expression of yourself. And if you want to get to where you need to go, then you yourself have to evolve and grow as a person. And, and why is it that when it rains, it pours, right? You say, well, I've got, I've got this like six month goal and I want to get there, but in the short term, all this self doubts hitting me and all these life yeah. events are hitting me. And it's, it almost feels like the whole, the universe is conspiring to tell you not to do it, but you have to power through anyway. And it's just like, like why does it always happen that way? But uh, that that's reassuring for many of us to know that we're not alone yeah. and that all of the, the insecurity and the vulnerability and all that stuff, it happens to all of us, but some people quit and others succeed. And so we need to have those right tools in the toolbox in order to succeed, right? We need to, have the positivity and the learning and the outside help from people like you to fix up our brand, to fix up our marketing messaging, to fix up our traffic. And you mentioned some uh, just really cool concepts here that we weren't able to exactly unpack. But if someone wants to reach out to you and find out more and get one of these conversations started, what's the next logical step? If someone listens to our podcast and they say, okay, I want to go and find out more about Ms. Suzanne Riley, where should they go? Yeah, sure. So um, they can connect with me further at my website, SuzanneRiley.com. And I'll mention just a couple of cool things on there. Um, I have a free email opt-in. Um, it's called Content Calendar Mastery, um, where people can map out a year's worth of engaging topics in 90 minutes or less. And this is really a little bit on voice of customer research and responding to the question, like finding the questions that people have and responding to them. And once you know how to do this, it's really easy. I mean, it's a shift in a way of thinking, but it's not hard to do. Um, so I teach people that. And then I also have a $97 masterclass and that is called um, cracking the code, identify where your online business efforts fall short. And it basically walks people through that brand foundation. Um, and then, uh, that sort of bringing people through your business that we talked about earlier and how to assess each, each piece, see what's strong about it, see what could be optimized and sort of like plug up any leaks in their online funnel. Very nice. So f find out the weaknesses we're not even aware of and, and make everything running at tip top speed. So that is SuzanneRiley.com. That last name is spelled R-E-I-L-L-E-Y. Suzanne Riley is that business coach who will turn your word of mouth success into online biz mastery, cut through the noise, find the easiest and most powerful path to your unique goals. And as we wrap up our conversation here, Suzanne, people are going to SuzanneRiley.com. I like to put my guests on the spot and try to stump them a little bit and ask them for a helpful quote or lesson that has helped them that might help us. So what comes to mind to you as far as a quote or lesson? Definitely. So this uh, is inspired in part by a bit by a mentor that I had years and years back. Um, and basically, keep in mind that there is work to do, but don't make it harder than it is. Very nice. Don't make it harder than it is and get that extra help. And you can begin by claiming that content calendar mastery at SuzanneRiley.com. And thank you very much, Suzanne, for stopping by and giving us some wonderful ideas and advice. I really appreciate it. Yep. Thanks again so much for having me. This was great.